Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Space Pirates Invasion. We are currently exploring a space pirate lab and we're learning lots of actually fascinating information. I'm I'm starting to get real stoked here. I love love the lore and science. Wait, are you a normal space pirate? Yes, alright. Chick boom! And chick boom! Wait, no, what? You're already dead. Wow, these guys are way weaker than I anticipated. Mm, boom! And boom! And boom! And boom! And boom! Scanned! Mutation strain 776V shows massive absorption capacity influx. Strain replication is now underway. Oh my gosh, we're going to do a mass intake of knowledge here. Not what I meant to scan, but specimen 0.7. I say 0.7, but it's really 070, whatever. Optimal absorption mutation has led to unexpected degeneration of internal organs. Wow, that is not good for that specimen. You need those organs. Prep work on all empty stasis tanks must be completed before specimen batch Y arrives on 12, 3, 1, 12, 2, point 2. Wow, numbers confuse me. Not really though. Cordite casing of column appears weak. I can totally destroy that. Transfer specimen 344 to lab hydra complete. Further infusion suspended pending security assessment. So apparently there's something like dangerous here. Xenome behavioral patterns show decreased reflex activity at temperatures below freezing. Alright, so things slow down when they're frozen. That is mind-boggling, I must say. I never would have expected that. Alright, you know what? These turrets are just frustrating. Oh well. I have a professional strategy for it. Ha! Haha! <laughs> Pro sniper. Hey, can't do that. Alright. Alright, I'd say all the enemies are gone because the music suddenly much less tense. Strain 776V has been successfully replicated. We have named it Strain Vertigo. Mutation of Beta Xenomes proceeding. Hmm. Viral pathogens found in several xenomes have been traced to Phazon Batch 1664Z. Terminate all subjects. Huh. Alright. <coughs> alright, alright. This one will be, uh... Interesting? I don't know. Should I go high or low? Let's go low. I'd rather do low. Log 10664.2. Research outpost Glacier 1 in the Fendrana Drifts region of Talon Force Mountains is operating at 85% capacity. Sub zero temperatures have made the Metroid sluggish and easy to control, even though well into phase on infusion cycles. Cold containment stasis tanks are sufficient for the juveniles, but some of the larger metroids have been moved to quarantine caves for safety purposes. Security doors remain an issue, as malfunctions due to ice occur every day. Large predators in the waste are also a concern, as they continue to kill personnel and breach secure areas. Unfortunately, it has become clear that our containment teams cannot neutralize all of them without a vast increase in munitions and soldiers. Oh, almost going lightheaded after that one. Worth it, though. That was fun. I like all these voices. Tissue samples from stasis tanks must be handed hand carried to lab hydra for analysis notify security of all material moves all right <gasps> more information daily decontamination is now required for all personnel working in lab ether where is lab ether <gasps> more information warning do not handle sedated xenomes without proper ice containment equipment interesting <gasps> a thing i don't know 
Phazon batch 1734.0 shows mandible mutation across all subjects. Cross infusion with batch 1622.g recommended. I'm kind of sad that that one screen doesn't have any information on it. But you know what? Whatever, I can I can work with this. Huh. You know what? That appears to be a door. That appears to be a threat. What? What? Fine. Yeah, I know. Ha! Got him. Huh. Lower nodes of astronomical holographic projector currently deactivated. Oh, hi. See, I feel like you're supposed to be scary, but really, you should just be scared. Oh, well. Huh. No! I got knocked into the pit of despair, which is really just a pit of more information to scan. But, mm, whatever. Oh! <gasps> a more scan thing! This device is currently not active. This device is currently not active. How much should I bet that? This device is currently not active. Ooh, knowledge. Holographic projector extensions are currently inactive and need to be manually rotated. Use the spinners at the base of the projector to move the arms in place. Oh, neat. This device has been previously used. It has shut itself off. <laughs> it's like that machine that its only function is to turn itself off after you turn it on. Upper node of astronomical holographic projector is retracted and inactive. Alright, well... Holographic map coordinate data has been success has been updated successfully. Holographic spatial schematic is in lockdown per security directive 223445. <sighs> <clears throat> All right, did low last time. I'm going to try going high. This one killed my killed my voice last time, but let's try it. Log 10.299.2 scans of the spiral sector detected a massive energy spike. Um, Emanating from a Wanderer class planet identified as Talon 4, scout reconnaissance was immediately dispatched to the center of the spike, a landmass at heading mark 40.08.02, returning with planetary samples and uh, atmospheric imaging. Analysis shows this energy source to be an unstable radioactive material of enormous potential. We are unable to form an accurate risk assessment at this time, but we are unlikely to find an energy source this powerful again. Analysis will continue, but currently Town 4 appears to be a viable secondary headquarters. Oh god, my voice. Uh, no, it's alright. It just, my throat hurts. Oh well. Yeah. Log 10.401.7. Phase on mining is underway. 
Several garrisons have been established and terraforming of the Chozo Ruins is underway. Security systems are operational and science team continues to make progress in their biotech research. The Fendrana Drifts have proven to be an optimal location for research headquarters, and soon it will be joined by a fully operational combat base and starport. If command's predictions are half true, we shall rise into dominance in this sector within a deck cycle. Truly, there are glorious times. Oh god, I'm so sorry, guys. All right, what are you? Holographic sequence initialized. Wow. Oh, look, missiles. Oh, wow, a thing. Oh, wow, missiles. Oh, wow. That messed up my jump. Oh, my. I am having so many problems. Holograph? Ooh, that's upbeat. I like that. All right, I messed that up. All right, messed it up again. Ah, there we go. Wow, a holographic projector. Wow, that looks like a place I need to go. Oh, wow, that looks like a thing I can scan. Lower node of astronomical holographic projector are functioning normally. Yes, of course. This spinner device has been previously used. It has shut itself off. Wait, I should just check like the bottom floor, make sure there's no like holes for me to roll through. No, all right. Definitely faster to just spam it. Ooh, a holograph projection. <gasps> Ooh. I want that. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Planet Zebes. <laughs> Mass 4.8 trillion teratons. That's pretty heavy. Profile planet's crust is primarily earthic ore, making it ideal for subterranean construction. A class 19 planet, Zebes. Zebes, I'm gonna call it Zebes, is inhospitable to most bioforms. The world was considerably unremarkable until it became a base for space pirate forces. Hmm. Planet Twin Tabula. 
planet is best known for twin fever, a disease caused by a viral strain native to twin tabula. Why is it called twin tabula? Because I imagine twin fever is named after twin tabula. In the early stages of the disease, victims suffer from double vision. When the twin sight fades, the victim is near death. I see. No, I was wrong. So twin fever comes from twin vision, and then it was named af like after the disease. Rock of twin fever. Tabula. Or door? No, or mine too. Relatively small in an uninhabitable wasteland savaged by nuclear dust storms and constant seismic upheavals. Talon 4. Ecosystem studies indicate that Talon 4 was a biological paradise prior to the impact of an extraterrestrial object, where remains of the biosphere is slowly fading due to exposure to phazon radiation. At current rate of decay, Talon 4 will be a barren class 13 wasteland in approximately 25 years. Damn, I better finish my mission quickly. Billium. <laughs> Quarantine. Atmosphere is rife with Mitralis. Mitralis, a sentient gaseous global exterminator virus. Wow, that is super neat. That's Billium. I can't scan the very middle, I guess. Good to know more about the world. All right. Now, is that a grappling hook spot? Uh. make that jump. Told ya. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What are you? Super missile. Oh boy. Super missile acquired! This powerful missile uses five missiles. Using the power beam, press and hold B to charge, then press missile to fire. Interesting. I do want to know this extra information, to be honest. Beam combo. The single shot charge combo fires one blast at a time. Each shot uses a number of missiles. Oh, wow. Super missiles, the power charge combo. Uh, I have a problem. I have fixed my problem. My stream died temporarily. Sorry about that, guys. Samus's notes. Super missile is a single shot charge combo. Each shot costs five missiles. Super missiles can destroy objects made of cordite. All right, neat.
Ooh. A save station. That is most convenient. Wave beam. Bamboo. Annoying things. Elevator. Where's this go to? Control tower. Oh my. Ooh, incoming scan data. Pirate. Communic main research facility. Oh, crazy. That's where I'm heading. <laughs> Man, I feel like I should have checked out that other room. Whatever. I'm sure I'll be back there again sometime. Ooh. Space pirate. No new space pirates. Whoa. Sure, I've scanned these before. Yep. Tumble and burn. Pirates, you can now stand up to the might of the one and only Samus Aran. Told you.
So I need to find something with extreme heat. I wonder if a charged missile counts as extreme heat. Nope, apparently it's pretty cold. <sighs> Alright, healed up. Let's, uh, let's do this. Lab ether. Cool. Is that a metro? Phase on infusion, stage six, subject Metroid. Subject's mass at 180% of previous phase on cycle, increasing dosage by 4%. Now we're learning what Metroids are. Metroid containment fields appear 100% effective after adjustments. The temperatures below 10 degrees centigrade will render Metroids docile. So we need extreme cold to like, get rid of Metroids. Metroid brain scan results in. Studies show accelerated activity in parietal lobe during hunting cycles at temperatures above 10 degrees centigrade. Internal organs of Metroid seems to be limited n to nucleonic absorption cells and massive energy reservoirs. Hmm. Containment temperature stable at 3 degrees centigrade. Environmental diagnostic satisfactory. But I haven't scanned everything yet. That thing's pretty cool. Gosh, my breathing is so heavy. New creature. Morphology Metroid. Energy-based parasitic predator. The dominant species of planet SR3BB. Or 88. <laughs> Metroids can suck the life force out of living things. Wow, that's a really common phrase in games. A Metroid will latch onto its prey and drain energy, growing larger as it does. The only way to shake and attach a Metroid is to enter morph ball mode and lay a bomb. Fascinating. Ah, uh, well. Got him, coach. Ah! Alright, what are you? New pirate data. How am I doing this? Log 10.891.0. The reconstruction. <coughs> oh, God. No, it can't do that. The reconstruction of Geoform 187, codenamed Ridley, was recently completed. After his defeat on Zeebs, command ordered a number of metagenetic improvements for him. Through aggressive, though aggressive, we were able to implement these changes in a cycle. The metamorphosis was painful, but quite successful in the end. Early tests indicate a drastic increase in strength, mobility, and offensive capability. 
Cybernetic modules and armor plating have been added as well. We believe our creation, now called Meta Ridley, will become the mainstay of our security force, a job he will certainly relish. I always preferred ketchup or mustard, but whatever, suit yourself. A new pirate data entry has been downloaded. Space pirate encrypted data decoded. Log 10.444.4, initial transfer of a Metroid to Talon 4 research facilities has been completed. Three were terminated in an incident in the landing site, but the others were pacified and transported safely. Initial phase-on infusion testing is underway. We are eager to observe the effects of phase-on on Metroids, especially their ability to absorb and process the energy given off by phase-on sources. Early research suggests a considerable growth in power and size. Whether the creatures stay stable thereafter remains to be seen. Right, so Metroids, dude. Oh boy, that's a huge part of this game considering it's literally the namesake. All right, this is exciting. Let's see what's happening. Space Pirate, log 10.957.2. Confidence is high regarding Phazon applications. We know enough about Phazon now to begin combining it with Space Pirate DNA. The code name for this venture will be Project Helix. Preliminary studies indicate that Phazon infusion could produce radical new pirate genomes. Benevolent mutation levels are high in current test subjects. Phazon badness is a concern, but reinforce refinements in the infusion process should reduce or neutralize the odds of mental degeneration. Directive in the event of Metroid attack repel creatures with missiles set to maximum concussion. Right. As energy based creatures Metroids show immediate mass increase upon energy absorption. I kind of want to just shoot it with energy and see what happens. Motion near Hunter Metroid DG appears to trigger psychotic episodes. Personnel are to stay at least three meters away from stasis tanks. Oh. Hunter Metroid DS is showing signs of increased instability and heightened immunity to cold dampening fields. Oh no. Quarantine specimen exhibits highly aggressive behavior. Its body structure, composed of phazon ore, appears nearly invulnerable. This has rendered our effects to train and discipline subjects useless. This tank holds the remains of experiment 7526, conversion of elite pirate unsuccessful. Oh wow, that's a lot of parts. information. All guards must use ice containment gear when transporting metroids. This includes sedated specimens and those pronounced dead. Oh my, that's ridiculous. So are their cells literally just like, their cells just naturally absorb energy. So it doesn't matter if they're alive or dead because they just absorb energy. Hey look, more Metroids. Hey look, a door that is so superbly hidden. Empty stasis tank. Stasis tank C012 is contaminated beyond acceptable safety standards. Remove immediately. 
Alright, stage six, subject Metroid. Subject's mass at 180% of previous phase on cycle, increasing dosage by 4%. sorts of information over there. <gasps> Ooh. How do I get in? I must know. I must know. Elevator operational. East Quarantine Cave has been secured. Specimen, specimen remains in the quarantine area. All experiments have been suspended pending pacification of area. Metroids infused with phazon strain vertigo are thriving. We feel they could be class one energy harvesters if proper submission measures are employed. Project Titan is suspended indefinitely. Security breaches resulting in massive casualties have occurred. Access is strictly prohibited until further notice. Space pirate encrypted data decoded. Hmm. Log 11.420.7. Metroid dissection continues to provide more questions and answers. Our research teams have isolated the energy conduits that run from the invasive twin mandibles to the energy core in the creature's quadripartite nucleus. Oh, quadripartite nucleus. But the manner in which a Metroid actually extracts life force from its prey remains an utter mystery. The victim does not lose blood or any other vital fluids, and yet the Metroid extracts energy. Identifying this energy is our central problem. It takes no physical form, and yet without it, the victim dies. We will continue to research this matter as the isolation of this life-giving essence could be the key to our ascendance. So they want to be immortal by, like, sucking energy and giving it to themselves? New pirate data. Log 11.550.6. Studies of Metroid biology continues, though with limited progress. It seems likely that we will be much more successful using the Metroids for our means rather than trying to reproduce their powers. If they could be adequately tamed, we would have no need of a proper understanding of their metabolism. A small force of disciplined Metroids could wipe out entire armies, and once we find a way to shield them from cold containment weapons, they will be invincible. Furthermore, if we could then harvest the energy then they consumed, we would have a near limitless source of power at our disposal. Oh my, that is just horrendous. Huh, this looks fancy. Alright, that does not hard track as hard as I would like it to. Oh, what? That was the opposite direction I expected. Oh my!
Oh boy. I just watched that. <laughs> oh boy. That was close. 55? So does that mean I can like... Hmm. Got him. That was neato. Uh... Excuse me? All right, then. All right. Uh, I feel like this room has been adequately looted. So, I feel like, unless this is a save area, I should probably hmm, call this episode here. This is another 40 minute long episode. There's just too much lore. Just come here and die. Oh, wait, yeah, I, I need to scan these. Ice beetle. Burrowing insect with an ice reinforced carapace. Averse to heat, this member of the beetle family has adapted to life in the sub-zero temperatures in the Fendrana Drifts, growing a thick ice shell over its entire body. The ice is extremely resilient, providing the ice beetle with extreme protection and augmented digging abilities. Alright, I'm definitely going to tackle that one in the next episode. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Alright. Well, thanks for watching, guys. As always, hope you have a great day.